people. You know, a couple years ago, I was wondering, why am I doing this? Why am I in urban ministry? What's my role? What's my identity? Is this just a stepping stone to be a senior pastor? I mean, is there anything legitimate? Is there anything worthwhile? Is there any meaning in doing youth ministry in the city? Why would I be here with low salary and no budget and people don't understand me and the principal won't talk to me and pastor's too busy for me and why would I do this? And for some reason, God said, you're salt. And when God said, you're salt, at first I said, so what? I mean, what is salt good for? What does salt do? I mean, how can I find an identity in salt? How can I make a profession out of being salty? And then I thought about what salt does. First thing when I think about salt is it tastes good. I mean, I, I, all right, I'm from Minnesota, but don't let that fool you. Because my daddy's from Louisiana and my mama's from Alabama. So I grew up with salt. I mean, I grew up with salty things, y'all. I mean, you know, I love salty stuff on my food. I mean, I put ketchup on eggs. I put salt and pepper in my grits. I mean, I, I put Heinz 57 on a steak. I put, you know, open pit, Lord have mercy, on, on, on ribs. I mean, I love saltiness. I love salty taste. I love seasoning. And, you know, I went to a high school that was 78% African American in Minneapolis. So everything was salty and tastes good and had rhythm and moved and was on beat. But when I went to college, I went to a college where I was one of seven black folks. And when I went to the cafeteria, there was nothing salty in there. Instead of collard greens and pinto beans and cornbread and fried chicken, there was baked fish and tater tot surprise. I didn't know at that Catholic college that during Lenten season they wouldn't put no ribs out. <laughs> Friday couldn't have no chicken. So I got mad. I got frustrated because I needed salt. I needed something to taste good. I needed something on my food. So I ran for student government. Oh, I ain't lying to you. And I ran on the platform, if you vote for me, there'll be Louisiana hot sauce in the cafeteria. And I won. And the food start tasting better at St. John's University in central Minnesota. See, salt makes things taste good. That's why God needs salty people. That's why we need salt in the city, because it brings good taste. You know, sometimes the neighborhoods we're in get bitter. They become drab. There's no taste. There's nothing good. People look at the city and say, what's good in the city? Where's the taste in the high school? Where's the taste in the church? Everything seems bitter. It seems like Kool-Aid with no sugar. It seems like, you know, tater tot surprise with no seasoning. Where's the taste? You're the salt of the earth because you bring good taste. Things ought to taste better because of you. Things ought to be just a, a little bit better. If something's drab, if something's bitter, if something's tasteless, when you walk in the room, you should season the room. But that's not all that salt does, though. You know, before the technologies of refrigeration, they used salt to keep meat fresh. They kept food preserved by using salt. They would pack things with salt because if you didn't use salt, it would spoil. I don't know if there's any vegetarians in the room. If there are, you know, vegetarians would tell you, don't eat meat. Don't eat red meat. Don't eat red meat. I want to tell you, sisters and brothers, red meat's not bad for you. Green meat, that's bad for you. Green meat. If you see some purple meat, brother, don't eat that. Leave that meat alone. 
See, what salt does is it keeps things from spoiling. It keeps it from being rotten. It keeps it from going sour. That's why we need salt. See, if the school gets sour, if a life of a young girl starts to ruin and it, she starts to change colors on the inside because of abuse and hurt, we need some salt in the city to keep it from going bad. About three years ago, I was in Omaha, Nebraska. And I was speaking at an inner city camp in Omaha. And while I was there, I was for the Fellowship of Christian Athletes, and I was there at this camp, and the principal who brought me said, hey, I want to take you out, show you around Omaha. I didn't think that would take too long, so I said, sure, yeah, I'll do that. that yeah, 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 sure. Go around Omaha. So we were driving around the city, and he said, now we're getting to the rough part of Omaha. This is like the rough side of Omaha. I was like, ooh. <laughs> rough Omaha. What are you going to do? Throw a cow hoof at you? What they going to do? <laughs> Don't go to Omaha, y'all. Rough. So as we were driving down the street in Omaha, that was the rough side of Omaha, he would point out to me, he'd say, that's a crack house right there. Somebody was shot and killed two weeks ago on this corner. You know, there's a lot of drug dealing on this corner. You know, you know, somebody was abused in this house. The police were here. And, you know, he kept telling me all this bad stuff that was happening. But pretty soon I couldn't hear him because I noticed that as we were going down the block, there was a church on every other corner. And as he was telling me all the violence and all the crime and all the drug dealing and all the abuse that was going on, and I saw Methodist Church, Church of God in Christ, Missionary Baptist Church, this church, first church of this, first church of the almighty Jesus Christ on the throne, hallelujah, like to shout when I feel good church. I mean, it was all these churches. And what I said to myself is how could this be the worst neighborhood with the most churches? How could the neighborhood that has a church on every single corner be the worst neighborhood in the city? And I went back to Minneapolis and I realized that Omaha, I can't pick on them. Because in North Minneapolis, that's supposed to be, you know, one of the rough sides of town. But on every other corner, there's a church. How can the part of town with the most churches be the most rotten? Because we need some salt in the church. We need some salt to keep it from going rotten. We need the salt so it won't go sour. We need some salt in the meantime. We need some salt in the noonday. We need some salt. We need some salty people in the city. Because when you're salty, you bring good taste. And when you're salty, you keep things from going sour. But that's not all that salt does. You know, I'm from Minnesota, and it gets cold in Minnesota. Oh, yes, yes, sir, yes, ma'am, it gets cold in Minnesota. I mean, if you're standing on the bus stop in Minnesota, and your nose starts to run, before you can get a tissue, you have a snot sickle right here on the top of your lip. I mean, before you can, like, do something, a booger pop, just right here on the top of your lip. It's cold. It gets so cold in Minnesota, it don't even have to snow. Just the exhaust from the cars, when it hits the pavement, freezes, and they call it black ice. But if y'all want to visit me, you know, I'd love for y'all to come. You know, when it gets real icy, I don't want my wife or my daughters to slip and fall. So we put stuff out and they put things on the street so people don't, you know, have accidents or slip and fall. Now, there's two things they put on the ice in Minnesota. They use sand and they use salt. Now, it's important to know the difference between what sand does to, to, to ice and what salt does. All sand does is give you the traction to walk on the ice. But what I like about salt is salt eats away at the ice so that you don't fall in the first place. See, what happens is in our life, the devil puts a slippery path out in front of us. So we would slip on drug abuse and slip on sexual abuse and break our heart in a bad relationship or slip and fall on alcoholism or slip and fall on pride and ego. And you know, we could come in and put sand down so that you could have traction on the ice of the devil. But what God does through the Holy Spirit is put salt down and eats away at the ice so that you don't have to slip and fall because the devil a liar and nothing the devil puts in your pathway can break you or hurt you or cause you to slip because there's salt on the ground. 
Too many pastors are slipping and falling because we need some salt. Too many kids are falling through the cracks because there's no salt in the city. There's too much racism and sexism and backbiting and violence and gossip because we, we can't use sand in the church anymore. Sand is over. Stop bringing sand to the church. Stop preaching sand. We need some salt. Sand's good for the beach, but not for the church. We need some salt in the city. So if you would agree to be salt, you can do three things. You can bring good taste to the world. You can keep the city from spoiling and going rotten. And you can keep people from slipping and falling. I have to warn you though, if you decide to become salt, sisters and brothers, salt's not very popular. You won't win homecoming king or queen being salt. You might not get elected mayor. You might not become president of the convention being salt. See, in our world, salt has a bad reputation. You know, people say, don't eat too much salt. You know, high cholesterol, it could kill you, give you a heart attack. Don't eat salt. So, you know, salt's not good for you. Don't use salt. Salt is bad. So what they do is they create salt substitutes. So they have, you know, I can't believe it's not salt. Or I can't believe it's not butter. Or, you know, low sodium. And so instead of it really being salt, it's a low-down version. It's a watered-down version of salt. And see, that's what we've done in the church. we got Mrs. Dash Christians and low-sodium Christians and I can't believe it's not butter Christians and it's not really salt Christians. And we've watered down the gospel in the city because nobody really wants to be salt because salt's too dangerous. Salt might kill you. Salt might get you shot. Salt might get you a bad reputation. You might be persecuted being salt. So I'm going to be Mrs. Dash. God don't want no low cholesterol Christian. God want a greasy, fried up, salty, low down show. Now salty, fried up, seasoned up, Christian, good love. Jesus don't have no time for no low sodium Christian. I ain't got time for no sugar free diet right Christian. Need a fried up greasy salty high cholesterol give a brother a heart attack Christian. Somebody feel me up in here. We need salt in this city. We need salt in this city. We need salt. But how can you bring good taste to the city if there's no good taste in your life? How can you keep the city from being bitter if you're full of bitterness? How can you keep somebody from slipping and falling when we slip every day? I'm not talking about perfection. I'm just saying to... Be salt in the city, one must be salty. And to be salty, you got to be hungry. I'm a basketball coach, and I tell my players sometimes, you know, I can practice you all day long. We could run all day, but you know, at some point in time, you got to be hungry. It don't make no difference. You have to be hungry after the game. I mean, you have to love the game. I mean, you have to carry a basketball under your arm. You have to wear a windsuit and ball shoes every day. I mean, you know, I coach girls basketball. So I tell them, if you're thinking about your nails and your hair and who, who's going to look at you during the game because you're fine, you won't win. You got to be hungry. You got to be hungry. The best way to be salt for God is you got to be hungry for God. I mean, you got to be hungry. And we all get hungry. Oh, man, some of y'all wasn't on time for this session, but you was on time for lunch. I mean, y'all know about hungry. You got to be 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 hungry. And you got to eat every day. And you got to know what to eat and what not to eat. See, there's nothing wrong with being hungry. The issue is where you're going to eat at. I mean, it's a blessing. It's, the scripture says, blessed are those who hunger and thirst. It's what you're going to drink, where you're going to go. 
The reason why sometimes we struggle in youth ministry, we go to the wrong places to get our hunger met. Some of us been pimping kids trying to feed off them. We've been eating on kids so we can have high self-esteem and, you know, a nice ego and so we can feel affirmed and get some strokes and feel like I am somebody. So we become spiritual cannibals and we're eating kids. No, if you're hungry, go to God. Go to God. Go to God if you're hungry. If you're hungry, you can eat as much as you want. There's a buffet. You can get full. I mean, you can get spiritually obese. But don't go to the wrong place to eat. Go to God. Go to God. Go to Jesus. That's where you get fed. If you need affirmation, go to Jesus. If you need meaning in your life, go to Jesus. If you need your ego de dealt with, go to Jesus. You can eat all you want, go to Jesus. Be hungry. You gotta be hungry to be salty. You gotta be hungry. Now, you know, there's some good eating habits we need to develop. One is, you know, sometimes I eat too fast. And sometimes when I eat too fast, the food gets caught in my throat and it never gets to the bottom part where it can be digested through my system. So sometimes, you know, I'm running out the door trying to get to a meeting and I eat a piece of toast and I eat it so fast that I just almost choke on it and it's stuck here. Don't read the Bible so fast that you choke on it, that it gets stuck and never gets to the bottom of where it needs to be digested so that the word can live in you. Don't pray so fast that it gets stuck in your head and it never gets to the bottom of your soul. Don't eat so fast. You eat, but don't eat fast. You know, another thing I found is the later I wait to eat, food becomes a sleeping pill. If I don't eat till lunchtime in the afternoon, I'm no good because I'm sleepy, I'm tired. The earlier I eat, though, food is energy. I get energized. I get excited. I mean, if I get up early in the morning and I eat a good, nutritious breakfast, I'm energized. If I wait till noon to eat my first meal, I'm tired. Don't wait too long to eat with God. Don't wait too long to, to go to the buffet of Jesus. I mean, you ought to start early in the morning with a balanced meal. Get all the nutrients you can get early in the morning. Start your day with a meal with God. The other thing is don't eat too much of the same thing. You know, sometimes I go a place and I just want meat, 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 meat. I love meat. You know, some of us like that in the church. I mean, all we want is praise. That's all we want. I want to give me a plate of praise. I don't, you know, hey, keep that Bible study. I don't eat that. I'm allergic to that. I don't eat no Bible. Come on now. you cra I break out in hives eating some Bible. <laughs> Shoot, last time I ate some Bible, they had to take me to the doctor. You know, I think I'm allergic to that. No, you better get a balanced meal. You better get some praise and worship, some Bible study, some prayer, a spiritual retreat, some accountability. Get you a whole nutritious meal from God. And what I like about God is you can eat as much as you want. Now, when you eat the food, make sure you digest it. See, the problem in youth ministry sometimes is we suffer from spiritual anorexia and bulimia. Which means instead of letting the food we eat from God, which is our food, digest in us, we throw it up on the kids. And what we do is we vomit God on kids. And the word wasn't for the kids, the word was for you. What you read, what you prayed about was for you. It was for your house, it was for your life. But instead we put our fingers in our mouth and we throw up what was for us and we put it on the kids like that's their word. Don't become anorexic and bulimic as a Christian. Because you need to eat to be salty, you need to eat to be salty. You got to be hungry, you got to be hungry. Eat as much as you want. Oh, you know, when I go visit my grandmother in Monroe, Louisiana, I like that she's not so sophisticated when she eats. You know, some people can't eat unless they have two forks, a knife, and a spoon. Some people can't eat unless they have a big old napkin they can lay in their lap. You know, some people can't eat unless it's the food that they like. You know, some people just can't eat unless it's right. What I like about my grandmother is sometimes when there wasn't a table, she put out a tray and sat on the couch and ate. And sometimes when there wasn't enough room on the couch, she sat on the floor and laid a bath towel on, on the floor and put the food on that. Sometimes instead of a fork and spoon, she'd sit down and take the cornbread in her fingers and sop the collard greens up with her fingers. I don't have time for a fork. I need this food. I don't have time for two spoons. I need this food. I don't have time for China. I don't need to intellectualize my diet here. I need to eat. I don't need it to be sophisticated with 
candle lights and romantic because I need to eat. I'll do anything to eat. I'll walk through you to get this food. I'll step on you to get to this food I need. When you got to eat, don't be picky. Don't be finicky. Don't be too intellectual and sophisticated. Just eat. And if you've got a... Good Lord, there's some good food. Ah! Woo! Yeah, feel this up here. Good. Give me, give me. You better give me that. Woo! Oh, excuse me. <laughs> hey, don't try to look cute when you eat and just eat. Lick your fingers if you want to. Oh, you got to be hungry. You got to be hungry. It, you're blessed when you're hungry. All that matters is where you're going to eat. And you need to eat with Jesus. God calls you to be the salt of the earth. To be salt. To be the salt of the earth. God calls us to bring good taste to the city. God calls us to deal with the things that are sour. God calls us to keep people from slipping and falling. All you got to do, sisters and brothers, is just go eat. And when you go eat, you get full of salt. And you become a salt shaker. And when you go into the city with all its problems, with all its challenges, with all its hardcore, you just shake on it. Pastor don't understand me. Just shake on it. Girls getting pregnant, just shake on them. Kids joining gangs, just let me give you a double shaker. I'm full of this stuff and I got to get rid of it. Go into the high school. Go into the junior high. Go to the community center. Oh, go into the drug house. Uh, go into the stores. Uh, go into the parks. Uh, be a basketball coach. Be a football coach. Write literature. Write poems. Sing songs. Whatever you do, just shake on it. 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 Go back and eat and shake on it. Go back and eat and shake on it. Go back and eat and shake on it. And Go back to eat and shake on it and go back to eat it. Pretty soon you got a rhythm going and you got a beat going and you can't be stopped now because you're just eating and shaking and eating and shaking and shaking and eating and shaking and good Lord be the salt of the earth.